When we have something in the world today, a, a crisis situation, gold and silver go up. When I first realized what was happening and, you know, going to continue to happen, uh, you know, I guess I uh, felt a lot of pity for myself. Endangered species are the ones that need large blocks of habitat because we've pretty well broken up those habitats with roads and farms and cities. I'm Twyla Young. I'm Kevin Nicewanger, and this is Five Country Close-Up. Tonight we'll find out a little about what it's like to be blind. We'll also look at some winter birds, but first, the glittery world of precious metals. Kevin? With the price of gold and silver going crazy in the last few months, we thought we'd find out just what's involved if you're interested in buying into the shiny stuff. JMP coin. Yes, we do buy silver. Right now we're paying $19.50 for dollars worth of coins and $21 for the silver dollar. For most businesses dealing What's in that? gold and silver related items, the phones have been ringing off the hook the past couple of by. months. That's all because of the latest surge in gold and silver prices. And just about everyone sees a chance to get rich quick. Hi, Fine, thank you. I'd like to know what uh, these coins are. And coins aren't Those, the only uh, thing have people have tried to sell. Family heirlooms that have been passed down for generations seem to have a way of coming out of the closets and into the hands of prospective buyers. They'll come in and they'll sell us their silverware, for instance, as a case. And they'll say, when silver hits another plateau, that's when my teapot and this and that go. So they've got it all figured out, uh, just how, how much of a family heirloom each item is, it actually is. They sell it in plateaus. The gold and silver boom began shortly after Christmas. At that time, you could buy an ounce of gold for $600 and an ounce of silver for $16. In the next month, the price of gold shot up to over $875 and silver to $51 an ounce. Both have since slipped a little, but are once again making gradual advances. When we have something in the world today, a, a crisis situation, gold and silver go up. If we have a relatively few days of peace and quiet around the world, uh, silver tends to settle down and gold tends to settle down. And it's very difficult to have a finger on what something is worth when there's a tremendous amount of political bearing on that price. Gold and silver dealers couldn't be any happier with the recent increases because after all, as more people come in to buy or sell, their business increases accordingly. And with the inflation rate now running somewhere between 13 to 16 percent, gold and silver looks like an excellent way to keep your head above water. Do you consider buying gold or silver as a hedge against inflation? No, because the prices went up so much, uh, I felt like it won't sustain that price, so I didn't think it would, you know, be a very good hedge if it goes back down. No, no, I haven't. Why not? Uh, I just, I don't have the funds for anything like that. I just, something like that wouldn't even, wouldn't even occur to me. No, have it. Why not? Because it could be just like anything else. What's going to go up next with this country? You don't know. Something might go skyrocket. Tin, you know, anything. So I don't want to mess with it. No, I don't think so. Not right now. The, Why not? Well, it's just it takes too much money to invest in gold or silver. you got to have the capital to begin with. It's something young kids don't have nowadays. There's no reason why a small guy can't come in and invest just a small part of his, his salary and come out just as good as a rich guy in proportion. But they, they just they don't, they don't know or they can't visualize that the average guy can't get into this yet. In some businesses, buyers offer advice as well as provide over-the-counter service. But recently, more attention has been drawn to the advice givers, one of whom suggests that gold and silver bullion may not be the only answer. We feel much, much more strongly about the low-risk, high-yield potential of rare coins and currency of numismatic value. We're interested in the low-risk, high yield type of investment. And that seems to be the bottom line of the gold and silver market. Regardless of how promising it sounds, there are risks involved. There is no guarantee that the market will continue to go up, which may leave some people out in the cold. We think we're in our frenzied area, a frenzied period where gold and silver has r risen spectacularly. Now that may continue to go up for a short period of time, 
but uh, we think in the long run uh, you're speculating and I would rather see people put their money now at this high level of gold and silver instead of putting them into those type of areas into numismatics. Never invest any more money uh, into the market than what you can afford to lose. It's, it's, it's like the stock market. It's a gamble. It's always a gamble. Uh, always make sure it's excess money that you don't have to spend here six months from now or a year from now that uh, you can sit on, afford to sit on. For some, buying gold is simply out of the question. But silver is another matter. Not only can it be found in coins, but in jewelry, silverware, and even tooth fillings. People are cashing in whatever they can lay their hands on. And it hasn't been limited simply to dealers. A number of retail stores are also trying to take advantage of the silver boom by offering merchandise for silver coins. But simple arithmetic shows you may not always be getting the deal you hope for. For example, a microwave oven priced at $400 costs $20 in silver coins, assuming that the store is redeeming those coins for 20 times face value. But an identical microwave oven might be on sale somewhere else for $329. You could save yourself $71 by selling the coins and buying the oven on sale. This whole example, of course, depends on exactly what silver is worth each day. And there seems to be some disagreement as to what the market is going to do. You've got to follow this thing, but uh, it looks like silver has a great potential of hitting $100 an ounce by the end of this year. Uh, you're going to see several ups and downs in the meantime. I hesitate to make any predictions because I've been in the business long enough to realize I don't know anything about what fluctuate, I mean, what the markets can do. I've uh, put away my crystal ball long ago. I don't think anyone can accurately predict what's going to happen or we'd all be millionaires. There's political factors involved. There's a lot of nuances. And unless you're on top of the market every minute, you're not going to be able to always 100% accurately pinpoint what the market's going to do. But despite their differences, all three warn to proceed with caution. Don't get carried away with the mania that, uh, uh, that prevails sometimes. Uh, it always seems to be in some of these situations that the insiders always bail out by the, about the time the masses get in. I think they, before they make commitments, they should do some checking around and, and try to figure out just exactly what is going on. If you should decide to cash in on those glittering gold or silver profits, the Internal Revenue Service has another thought to consider. Capital gains tax. Any profit made by selling precious metals is supposed to be reported for tax purposes, just like claiming stock sale profits. So before taking any action, remember to do your homework. It's a very poor policy to just pour money into something because you heard about it or you heard your neighbor said it was a pretty good deal. So you go down and pour $3,000 into something because somebody else said it was good. You should do your research. Gold and silver have held man's fascination for centuries. But never has there been such an increase in their values as we've experienced lately and a resulting rush to buy before it goes any higher. There are those who warn the gold and silver market will inevitably crash, leaving countless investors with a lot of overpriced, glittering metal. But still others say history shows that some forms of gold and silver will always be at a premium. I would defy anyone to come up with a better investment. I do feel, and I have been quoted as saying, and I've given speeches throughout the United States, that rare coins and currency of investment grade are by far the finest investment in the world. And I feel very strongly about that. And again, I would challenge anyone to come up with a better investment over a period of time. Kevin Neiswanger for Five Country Close-Up. Like any investment, I suppose it's a good idea to check with an investment counselor before you actually get involved with gold or silver. Well, that's right, Twyla. There's been a lot of cases of a lot of people that have gotten in over their heads because they just didn't know what they were doing. Up next, a report on what it's like to be blind. <laughs>